Now, this one has a sword floating above a stone and it's green and you have this gentleman reaching out for it and um, two other characters watching as he does so. And I remember you telling me at AluxCon that this was kind of you reaching out for uh, that you had this personality of you would go for the dangerous things that you didn't know if the sword was good or bad. Tell us a little bit about this piece. I was, I was always pushing the limits. I probably should have been dead many times. I didn't <laughs> push the limits. I didn't put, push the limits with drugs or alcohol or anything like that. I mean, I mm. didn't. I never abused any of that thing. But, but I liked adventure. I like. I like risking your life. I got a thrill out of it, and um, I, that's why I. Um, do you do extreme oh, sports or something? You like rock climb or hike or? Uh, well, I did when I was a kid, um, not with ropes or anything. We just climbed cliffs oh, all the way crazy. up to oh, just free climb. I mean, and we didn't have, we just wear our jeans and whatever tennis shoes we had on. That was it. And you start yeah. climbing. And yeah. I lived those big cliffs many times if I fell out, I'd kill myself. And then I got into hot rods and speed and motorcycles, mm. Harley Davidson's and the, the power, the speed, the power of horsepower, the G-forces, just get addicted to it. Yeah. And, um, adventure. Never putting your life on the line and get the heartbeat and then, I don't know what you experience. Really a lot of trail bikes, too. I've been really active that way. Cool. And all that goes into my ideals of creating like fantasy art. In life, there's dangers. Now, you can live a real safe life and do nothing, but you won't have very many experiences. You don't grow and learn very much. Right. When you put yourself out there in, in unknown situations or strange situations and risking your life, you know, everything, <laughs> you appreciate everything around you. you see, I, my vision would come clear. I don't know. I, uh, yeah. Maybe adrenaline helps you find your river more. <laughs> I don't know. I don't but, know. That's a good idea. Maybe. I mean, yeah. and putting your art out there is kind of somewhat of a risk as well. So yes, maybe yes, taking was, a physical risk helps yeah. you take the artistic risk. It does, I think. And it pushes you. Um, I was really intimidated showing all this stuff at LuxCon. I mean, you got the best really? art. Really? just about. Yeah. I don't You're right up there with them. Art. I don't, I look at my art, it's just my art, and I'm trying to get better, and everyone else's art looks better than mine. <laughs> That's just how it is. I mean, I look at, I go to, looks kind of like somebody's painting, like, oh my God, I wish I could paint that good, you know? And oh, I know. I, I go to, maybe, I come away intimidated. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. <laughs> but I do, it's, it's just, I think, Everybody's art looks better. You know your own art, I guess. It's you. It's like, look yeah. at your own self in the mirror. And after a while, you don't know if you, you're just, you just are who you are. And uh, then you go look at beautiful people walking around or something and like, wow, well, oh, man, I wish I was that beautiful. <laughs> you know, that tall and dynamic. But you are who you are. And my art comes out me and I'm used to it. I don't know. Uh, that's why you keep pushing, I guess. You don't know when you do a good one. You, you keep saying the next one will be a good one. I'm now, yeah. my, I'm thinking maybe, I mean, I still think my best paintings are yet to come. And I've got to believe that. Right, right. Because that's what keeps you going. If I knew I could never top these paintings in this image, all three of these paintings, then I'd quit. If I thought I could never get any better than this, why do it? I mean, you know, if you want to express yourself, then you can write books too. You can do other things, you know, because um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy. It's difficult. And you, you work your whole life. You sacrifice your life for this. And uh, you keep hoping and praying. And one day you'll get really, a really, really good painting. <laughs> and I think people's going to judge that, be the judge of that after you're dead. This was his best one. That was the best one. So I'll never know when I do my best painting. There'll be mm. some like these talking about are ones we've kept for one reason or another. Right. Mainly because we like them. And mm -hmm. um, so 
I don't know. You just do your best and guess the rest. That's, that's all you can do. <laughs> do your best and guess the rest. I like that. That's a great quote. Thank you. I worked at, when I was at Fort Knox as an illustrator, there was a, I was in my twenties and, um, and this older artist, <laughs> he mm-hmm. was probably 44. <laughs> Because when you're 20, you know, 44 or so, he might have been 45, something like that. But anyway, right. his, his name was Oscar, and he was Hispanic. And he's really the first his, Hispanic person I'd ever met because we go back a few years, there were not many um, Hispanic people around, especially in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really liked him. Uh, he was like a, almost like a second father to me. He had done about everything in art. He had sign painted, he had painted, he had done about everything uh-huh. and he was he was a wise man and he was a fun guy he's a good man mm-hmm. and uh i was just starting to use pen and ink and, and doing things that, and had to actually do some sign work or lettering work i'd never done that kind of stuff much and he was my mentor i would ask him questions and and he would tell me over and over when i have problems he'd say look Take all the ability you have, all what you've learned. That's your best. Give it your best. And after that, you got to guess the rest because you're working with your skills and you're making the best guess you can make. Right. If you've, been, if you've not been down this road before over and over again, then you don't know what's around the next corner. So when you're doing a project or when I'm doing a painting, I've never painted this before or these, this particular weather element or something. So you do all that you've learned and all you observed and you get to a point where that's gone as far as it goes. Now creativity and just your, what you want to do kicks in and that's, that's when you're guessing the rest, okay? Right. And if you guess pretty good, you can come up with a pretty good outcome, you know? Very so, cool, very so cool. I use that all the time. Do your best and guess the rest. That's how I love it. Yeah. I love it. Did this painting become a cover or anything? Yeah, it was a cover of Dragon Magazine. Again, that 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 particular issue. Now, you're looking at the bottom one or the top one? Well, uh, we got both going on here. So we have the one with yeah. the sword. So that became so a dragon. Real quick. Yeah, real quick. I'll tell you this. That was a Dragon Magazine cover. The, the magazine that, that month was about... Um, magical weapons uh-huh. uh, and so uh, again that's uh, the guy on the left was the same guy that was in thor oh okay yeah the same model <laughs> the girl on the right was my cousin she's been in a couple mm-hmm. and the guy behind there i just made him up uh, <laughs> and the rest everything else is just made up well most if i can't make up about 90 percent of the painting it's not fun so <laughs> <laughs> I like them. You know, I use some figures sometimes for models and just get it going, you know, get, get that right. And everything else, I just uh, try to make up that painting. So this is the the um, lock, lock picker, the pickpocket, the yeah. pick. She's picking a lock on a door, yeah. You can't really see it it's because of the glare again. I know, uh, I know. We'll have to the- insert a nice um, high res photo here for for us to zoom around in um you can probably go to my website right, let's see i don't know if you can get images off of that but a lot of these on there i don't know how big they blow up though anyway anyway uh the painting the girl holding the torch was my daughter she was about 18 then okay and, and the girl that's picking the lock is a daughter she's about 14 of the girl in the painting below of the woman in the painting below. Mm. So that's the mom and the painting below with the magical weapon. So uh-huh. the girl and the one up at the top here is her daughter. I can see the similarity now that you mention it. And um, and then the, the other girl's my daughter. And there was a book cover. And of course, we're keeping it because that's exactly what my daughter looked like when she was about what, 16, 17, 18, somewhere around there. Neat. She was a beautiful girl. All right. And then we have the magical runes. Is this a gravestone or is it just a stone out in the woods? It's got runes and you've got kind of, I think of them as kind of like a monk or something. 
I think it was dictating like those. Whole, it was could have been a holy place of some type. Uh huh. With stones in the background, but it might have been a, a vandalized or busted up over wars and time. But it still could be a, a place where there's power, you know, for wizards. Right. So this was a cover of a of a role playing game. Okay. And uh, it was something about magic and everything. So I got a. Uh, the girl in this one is the same one that was in the last one I showed you. Is that the mother of the of the daughter? <laughs> um, <laughs> she um, she um, she had a neat look about her, and uh, mm -hmm. she's very pretty and and uh, and built well. So I used her some. She was always I knew her. She was always easy to get a hold of. Nice. Didn't, didn't live that far away. And the other guy down there, he was a friend of mine, the guy with the, the writing in the book. And then I need a big burly guy. And so the guy below, he had this friend. He's, he's a big burly guy. He brought him over. And, and he was a big, big guy. And so I took a few little shots of them. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, the clothing and everything, I have to make up all, all the junk that's on them and put all that on. But um, I just like to... The challenge was uh, just, um, I want to keep it not just a bright sunny day, but more of a hazy kind of a day. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look close at the painting, there's uh, back in the back by the, what looks like a stone hingey thing. Yeah. The figure, figure watching him, he's hiding behind a stone. Like he's wondering what they're doing there. Um, Maybe he's going to steal uh, something from them. It's going to steal yeah. the magic runes. Or just keep an eye on them. Make sure they didn't. I don't know. He might yeah, I like that shadowy figure. Back to his master. It could be even a meaner wizard. You don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but I've had some weird things happen in my life at conventions. And I don't know if it's true or not. But like, there's lots of times I made up runes. Um, I would just make up design work. Yeah. And use it like a, like almost like lettering or like it would be symbols that maybe tell a story. Oh, it didn't really, to me, it meant nothing. Yeah. But, but it would be in the zone sometimes when I come with these ideals, you know, like in my river. Yeah. And I've had twice people look at art and it, it, I knew they was getting some out of it. I wasn't some of my art and I'll ask them. And one time I almost had to force somebody to tell me what they were seeing in my art. Yeah. They would tell me, like on this particular one, they said, do you know, I forgot now what kind of runes he said. I go, no. I said, I know just the old, like, sort of Celtic runes, how to use them. But I said, I don't know how the language work. I, the, I, the runes were symbolic. They weren't letters like we do. Right. I, said, I don't know how to you know, you can spell out something, but don't, that don't mean what it really means. And I said, so I just get in the flow and start thinking of runes and think of symbols that might go along with the painting. Just make them up. And this guy, and he was, um, I don't know if he was trying to um, just sort of, as I was saying, just blow smoke at you or something, or he was truthful. He seemed very truthful. He was you got a feeling from the guy. He's like, like he's wise. He he knows. He was older mm -hmm. than me. And not now, but he, back then he was older than me. And he said, um, and he was um, head of some type of organization that dealt in ancient religions and stuff. Like mm. good, because he was in, uh, one of the best in the, in the nation. I didn't know it. And he said, those runes, a lot of those are real runes. He said, can you read those? I go, no, I made them up. And he <laughs> tried to tell me what that, that meant and I'm trying to express it because it's not like spelling out words. Right. And the best he could express was just what I was, um, was hoping it would be, you know. So I don't know huh. if, if sometimes you, you come up with stuff that you don't really know what it is. But it might have been something, and and uh, but it's, that's happened two or three times where, or somebody keeps coming back looking at a, at a drawing or a painting over and over and over, and I finally say, "What are you looking at?" I said, 
then they start telling about what they know and about maybe the runes or a certain tattoo I put on a person before anybody was doing tattoos. Right. You know, now everybody's got tattoos. But back then, and here's what's funny. People didn't know what drew, uh, what Celtic design was. Yeah. Back, back before, uh, let's see, Dragonlance. I mean, I, I'm sure there was historians and stuff, but they never, the, the, you can see Celtic design in, in armor and shields and, and uh -huh. jewelry. But I started using the Celtic design a long time ago and stuff. And, and they're like, where are you coming with those designs? I said, it's Celtic. And, um, and then by the time, you know, we zip ahead 20 years or more, and you're seeing, well, even now today, zip ahead 40 years, almost yeah. 50. Wow. People started getting Celtic designs and tattoos all over the place. It finally became popular, but, but. Right, right. Was, that is crazy. So sometimes something comes through, huh? Yeah, something does, I guess. I don't know. Okay. So I love this piece. Um, this is two women, but one of them is translucent. She's in a lake, like a mystic yeah, or, or something. Yeah. yeah, I like that painting. We debated on on, on selling that at, at, at Lexicon or putting it for sale, but we chickened out and decided to keep it. <laughs> Good um, for you. The the girl on the right in the water, the spirit is the same girl that modeled for. The Ravenstone piece you liked. Oh, nice! And uh, and the girl uh, on the left, she was another. She's a local girl here. Uh, she worked at a store. I knew her and had her to model. And uh, that was a fun painting to do. All these colors on this. I know the lighting at Luxcom was so bright. These these paintings are really rich and very colorful, but you can't. Everything seems washed out because there's a flood of lights at Luxcom. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, it's there was good rich colors in it, and uh, I enjoyed painting it. It was uh, there's a book cover. Uh, I love the way her skirts and stuff flow down into the river. I don't know how you do that translucent that translucence. This is one of those situations you know what you want to try to do, and so you have to fall back on my old Hispanic friend and my Mexican. Do your best and guess the rest. So. Hmm. <laughs> Like, I got to make this dress go down the skirt and get transparent and go into the water. How do you do that? I have no clue. So you just start doing your best. Well, it looks great. Yeah, thank you. This one is you, right? Yeah, the Tavern about, Man? About 40 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was doing this painting for a book cover. Uh -huh. And, uh, um, uh, and you Two. can't see, me, but he is uh, the guy sitting down around his necklace is a little around his neck is like a little leather thing with a key on the end of it. And uh -huh. then the key, if you can see the actual painting or paperback book size, you can see it. And then, and then there's the cabinets up close, and there's a big lock on that. And these two guys were sitting by the king, and they wanted to, they wanted to get some medicine or some herbs and stuff from him and uh, anyway I, I turned out after I read the book I said okay Keith Parkinson we shared a studio then and uh, and I said I need I need to photograph some guy that's around 40 years old and got a beard and getting gray <laughs> where we can find somebody like that he looked at me and said you moron you just described yourself I'm like oh you're right I haven't thought about that so he took a quick shot of me, I posed, so I made it. That's, that's one of the first, I only done myself in a couple of paintings, but I tried to do a portrait there. Every artist does some kind of self-portrait, so I did a self-portrait of my, myself there. That's what I look like at about 40 years old. Then I'd keep the model for the other two hooded guys. Mm -hmm. But the real challenge of this painting was that whole room, and the, you can't see, but up in the upper, you had to have... The painting was tall because the book cover and they put a big title up there. Back then it was getting a huge title. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot, of, a lot of room to top and it was really fun to make the top of this building go up to the rafters and sort of get gray and smoky and, and dark. And the whole painting is just lit by the lamp hanging from, the, from a rafter and from the little lamp on the desk. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the one hanging, the hanging lamp is stronger. It was casting the most light. But um, um, it was a challenge and it was very fun. I really enjoyed painting that painting. Mm -hmm. And my wife and my kids decided we're going to keep that one for sure because that's back when I was a young man. And that's great. Painting that light must be a challenge. I mean, those intense darks and lights. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's just a, you're pulling the whole image out of your head, you know? So you got to visualize it. And then uh, like the, even the structure of that place, when I was stationed in Germany, every chance I could, I'd go into old build castles or old rooms and, uh -huh. and, uh, and look how it's made. I would look at, uh, just from when I was a kid, uh, like I said, uh, a lot of the old houses were built in the 1800s and, uh, and they were old. Some of them were old even in the late 1800s. Uh -huh. And I was just, I guess I had a good visual memory. I just stare at things, look at things, how it's made and stuff and, and how something was built and just try to remember it. At least remember it enough to fake you out. <laughs> so make it look right whether it was or not that's right that was the main thing look right yeah yeah well it's great those are guys are really in shadow and they've got the hoods and they're very tall and shadowy i like it and last but certainly not least there lies the evidence there yeah, lies the proof the yeah um this one stuck with me did it look good the line, this whole painting is just made up, except uh, I used, uh, I just looked at a lot of my photos of models I've taken. This is sort of looking at two or three and just sort of make it really. I just sort of do the, almost do the figure out from nothing. Just sort of Do you sketch your figures right. out in like pencil yeah. on the canvas first? Yeah. No, I do it on paper. I work on paper. I sketch sketch it out on paper and I use tracing paper, go over it again, re-sketch, re-sketch, re-sketch and get it to where I'll refine it and then um, scan it in Photoshop, blow it up bigger uh -huh. and I can really see it in my drawing and then go over it again usually. Uh, I end up with a lot of good drawings on tracing paper or vellum because oh. it's a process. I sit there and try to do one drawing really good to paint. Yeah. Off memory or something, it would take me, or imagination, it would take me to do a big drawing. It would take, you know, two days to get one right. And it still want to be what you really want. Right. So you got to do a lot of sketching, then you get the sketch you like, and you rework that, and then you trace over that to start forming up, putting faces, features, and fingers, and toes, and everything else. And you do it again, watch the proportions till you finally get it to where. I think it's ready to paint. Then you, with tracing paper, you can flip it over backwards. Look at it backwards. You'll see more mistakes when you look at it backwards. Oh, uh, great tip. So, you know, most right-handed people are very right-eyed, very right. And so when you flip it over, you see it a different way. You can see that you got a slant to the whole thing or certain things are not really like it should be. And then you, then hmm. on the trace paper, I'll trace back over the back of it sometimes. I'll throw another piece of trace paper and retrace that to straighten it up. So there's a lot of things to do yeah, just to get it to go. The scene, the landscapes are made up. It looks typical Kentucky at about this time of year. We can yeah. have cold, rainy, still some leaves out, but um, getting a little chilly, a little hazy. Yeah. And, um, this painting is much the, a more subdued color palette than your yeah. other ones. Was this one for yourself? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was doing it. I just wanted to do it. Wasn't for anyone. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to be a better painter. I mean, I, I go back, if you look at my early TSR stuff, it was really bright and almost gaudy, the colors. <laughs> and I wasn't, a good, I wasn't a good colorist. I mean, I didn't understand, you know, I wasn't good with color. It didn't come naturally to me. Drawing came naturally for me. That was my strong suit. I could draw. Mm -hmm. But when I painted, first I was painting like, if you had a box of crayons, so are you red here, <laughs> blue here? And I run out. I don't have a box of eight, you know. <laughs> and uh, then I met Keith Parkinson when he came to work there. He was he was a good ten years younger than me, but his strong suit was color. Naturally talented to color. 
Oh. And I would help him draw sometimes on the figures. He'd come over and help me with color. Yeah. So we was trying to learn from each other. I think that's why we got a studio together when we quit TSR to keep learning from each other. Um, he taught, he was teaching me how to see. And that's mm. what I've been working on ever since I was about 38 years old, learning how to see, not looking at things, actually seeing, understanding what you're looking at. Right. Looking at color. You don't, I was taking for granted, like, like the, the walls in this room are a beige wall, okay? Okay. All right. Now you get that paint on a sun, sunny day and pour that paint out on a white piece of paper. And there's about as pure beige as you're going to get, the true color. Mm-hmm. You get a room like this. I've got two or three different color light sources, a warm light, a cold light. It's inside. There's shadows. Yeah. That color is changing constantly changing it's yeah, not a color you don't you can't call it a color you know it's beige but it's not beige it's, it's everything it's got blues in it. it's got purples in it it's got grays in it it's got then there's oranges or yellows in it with a light stripe everything it's yeah. constantly changing and uh to teach you i mean he woke me up keith woke me up and from that point on i started focus on one thing how to see color Mm. and and that's what i've been doing and i'll continue to do that the rest of my life don't take color for granted you know like you're trained it's not your fault you're trained in school first grade you know whatever sky's blue grass is green trees got gray or brown trunks lots of brown trunks and yeah and but it's not true leaves. it's not true it's mm. not at all true you can't find that green crayon color in any landscape just about. You know, that's just a pure raw green in nature and, and everything. It's all it's subtleties. Why do you think, and this is what I told the classes I've taught, you're driving down the interstate, you're in beautiful hilly country like, like Pennsylvania. And everything mm-hmm. is, even in the autumn, it's beautiful in the colors. But you can spend Bought a man-made sign from a half a mile away. Why yeah. do you, why do you see that? It's not painted in flashy yellow or no, it's not it's just a big sign, say a sign with a white background, and they got red and blue letters on it or something. Uh-huh. Why that white is pure white. That red is pure red. That um, blue is pure blue. And it just it's it's out of it's out of place. It doesn't fit in nature. You just see it, it sticks out. Yeah. Well, nature is subdued. It only shows its pure colors just every once in a while. It'll show its colors in gems, precious stones, uh-huh. also in flowers and animal pelts, some of the animal colors and stuff, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like that. You get Interesting. these pure colors. And in flowers, you get pure colors, which you don't. Um, so when you look around all the time at nature, you hardly see any pure raw color. It's all subdued. It's all changing constantly the way the light hits it, the time of day, everything. Yeah. And, and, and that's something you got to soak up and drill into your head. And when you're painting, you got to keep that in mind. I wanted this to be a dreary day, sort of a gray day. I uh-huh. want some haze in the air. And I just go back to my memory because I painted this not at that time of year. Okay. I think it was spring when I was painting this. <laughs> wrong season but i just go back to my memory and think and think and and just what i've seen and i've run through the woods and played in streams like that before yeah and only thing fancy about this painting the only thing fancy is a dragon skull under the waterfall that's why the title is there lies the proof or there lies the truth because from looking at her and her clothing, she's a little bit of a witchy looking woman, but she doesn't really have things on her, on her clothing to tell you she's a witch or a magic user. She's just a woman dressed in old clothing. Yeah. So listen, she believed in dragons. She knew there were dragons in this land and nobody believed her. Yeah. But she stumbled across this skull and I think she goes back there once in a while just to look at it because slowly being washed out from under these rocks. Mm. And if you can't see it, most people can. It's just to the it's very left subtle down. Yeah, it's very subtle in shadows. And, and so, the water's so beautiful too, with its ripples. You kind of get lost in the detail work of those rocks well, and me, the water. <laughs> this painting went smooth. 
no problem, all the way up to the waterfall. <laughs> and I was just painting away. It was all, I was making good time. I was happy. And I started painting this waterfall. Now, I study things in nature. I look at things. I look at the uh -huh. bark on trees. I look at the, the way moss grows on all this kind of stuff you stare at, try to put it to memory. Yeah. And I realized I've never stared at a waterfall that much. Uh huh. When I, when I had, because when you just really look at things, you can see the random repeating patterns on how things are made, the, the shapes, yeah. everything. Stuff is broken down these like uh, these these repeating patterns, but not the same thing. It's random, and it all it's like pixels almost, or something like that. It's like little little pieces of shape that makes a whole chaos and, theory. And uh, yeah, and so if I study something long enough and I start to see its its pattern, its repeating pattern, uh, the, the subtle ones, uh, then you're like, I got you. I think I can do it. Well, I've looked at a lot of, a lot of waterfalls, but I hadn't tried to memorize. Mm. Once they start breaking up, what do they do exactly? Well, I was getting some parts right, but a lot of it not right. Mm -hmm. and I painted that waterfall six times. Paint over and over and over. Uh, the painting was finished except stupid waterfall. And so my wife kept saying, Why, when are you going to finish that painting? I don't know. When I can paint the waterfall correctly. Uh -huh. finally, uh, I thought, i got to paint this. So I, I was getting parts of it right. but So I go online to look up waterfalls. Uh -huh. I just zoom in on the, like where they really caught a waterfall really sort of splashing and stuff or whatever. Yeah. I zoom in on it. This little area about the size of your hand, I would try to look at that. The way water broke apart, you know, as it come apart, and look like it would, what I guess what logic tells me, droplets fly off with gravity and the force of the water droplets flying off the main water source, they turn into like, I guess with, if it was a perfect world, they turn into little rings, like little circles as a ball of water, a droplet of water spreads. Yeah. But Gravity works, it'll, it'll pull them, these little almost into diamond patterns or something that's not really round, and sort of, but you can see the repetitious patterns happening. And once I, I sit and looked up for about an hour, I jumped up, I said, well, I said, what are you, I said, I got it. I got that waterfall now. I said, I can paint it. I got and, that waterfall. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, well, I said more than just got that waterfall. That so-and-so waterfall could have been driving me crazy. So I said, I'm painting it. The last time correctly, uh, pretty good. I mean, I was I was burnt out on it by then, but I stuck stuck it out and painted that in. And I like the painting. We're going to keep it. It's uh, yeah. the colors are different. They're they're more realistic, real real. Not they're very different than all the other ones. It's more uh, Andrew Wyeth or that's where I, my heart's wanting me to. I like to paint for myself. When you're doing covers for games and books and computer games. They all want to jump out and grab you. Well, I did yeah. that. I mean, I had paintings where they did jump out and grab you, like the old D&D &D red box cover, the red dragon. Um, but as I get older, so I want to have, I want it more emotional, more put my heart into it and, and, and my own history of what I've loved and, and the land I grew up in. And what yeah. Was the land, the nature, nature. Uh -huh. And I want the colors to be they don't have to reach out and grab you. Just get that right time of day and that mood you feel, you know, and then feel the coolness in the air. You know, you need a jacket or something. Be able to paint that. Yeah, that does feel like late fall, early winter, crisp, cool day. Yeah, cool day. It's beautiful. Well, thank you, Larry. I want to thank you so much for sharing your private collection. Yeah. This is... They're beautiful. And I, hopefully I can add to that in the next few years. I don't know if, as I paint for myself, I'm sure there's some we want to keep. And uh, I hope they're good ones. Maybe one day I'll get one right. <laughs> really good <laughs> painting. That's my goal. Uh, so and I guess that's life, though. If you keep striving, if you have nothing to strive for, just give up. I don't know. But I've got to have a new challenge and, and my whole challenge my whole life is to get one right, get a really good painting. 
That's so cool to hear you say that such an accomplished painter. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. All right, thank you.